Greetings, y'all. Welcome to another video. I just got back from the ocean, took a nice swim. It's uh, still warm enough to to, uh, to dive in the ocean. It's cold, but warm enough to dive in. I took a nice little swim, got back here and decided, let's make a video. <laughs> So today I'm talking about a record show I went to recently. I really don't go to record shows at all, pretty much. I know a lot of you do and you find great things at them. Um, way, way back in the day, you know, when I first started collecting Van Halen stuff, I used to go to these KISS conventions. I'm not a KISS fan, but I'd go to these KISS conventions because they had all these vendors selling records and bootlegs and all this kind of stuff. And I would go there because I knew that the vendors who were there for the KISS convention would also bring with them Van Halen stuff. So I used to go to those a lot. And they were kind of a record show in a way. But, uh, you know, a proper record show. I went to one. I was working on a TV show in Ithaca, New York about 10 years ago. And I went to one there. And that was probably like the first real record show I went to. And I remember finding... Uh, Tom Petty album and uh, I remember finding the Cars Heartbeat City like still sealed uh, you know a brand new copy I know it's been reissued since but I bought a uh, an old copy from like 1984 and it was still sealed and I think I remember buying that for like seven bucks back then the prices you know vinyl hadn't really exploded yet and uh, so the prices were still really low. So like I got that brand new Cars album, perfect condition, still sealed for $7. Now, if I went to a record show or a record store and found that, you know, it'd probably be like 30 bucks or something. I don't know, I think. But um, that was the only record show. And then I think last summer I went to another one, uh, Punk Flea Market down in Charleston where I was working. And went to that one and you know they had a couple of vendors there but I I didn't really find anything that I wanted you know but uh still it was pretty cool you know but I I just don't go to them very often they're you know they're around I see them advertised here and there but I just generally don't go to them um we have a few in our area but uh about two weeks ago or so um we were supposed to be doing this project on a Saturday and the weather rained us out um, so I was able to go right like a block away here. There was going to be a record show, um, called record riots. They do a bunch of these in different towns or whatever. And they started, I think this was only the second time they did one here where I live. Um, and since our plans for that day were scrapped, even though it didn't really end up raining, we had to scrap the plans ahead of time. Um, and so I was just had nothing to do that day. And it, like I said, it was only like a block away from me. So I was like, eh, you know, let me stroll over there, see, uh, check it out, you know, and see what's up. They had a, a, a lot of, uh, vendors set up on this street, mostly vinyl. A couple of people had, uh, some CDs and stuff, but pretty much mostly vinyl. I looked through a lot of it, kind of some interesting stuff, but nothing that I really, uh, wanted to pick up, but I did end up grabbing a couple of CDs from this one vendor. So I'll show them to you now. 2002, we get the Transplants, and I believe this is their debut album. Uh, Transplants is a side project for Tim Armstrong from Rancid, and also Travis Barker from Blink-182, and this other dude who I don't remember what his name is. Um, I think it might just be other dude, I'm not sure. But, um, I remember the Transplants uh, song getting a ton of airplay on uh, Indy 103.1, uh, the radio station in California. Um, I think it was, oh, what was the name of it? Uh, I, I forget what the name of the song was, but I remember it getting a ton of airplay and I kind of liked it. And I like Rancid, I'm a big fan of Rancid. Um, there you go, to CD, and there's even a booklet here. Well, not a booklet, it was like a big fold out. But, uh, you know, kind of punk, a little bit of maybe hip hop kind of thrown in somewhat. Uh, big poster here and on the back, another poster. But uh, I saw this there and this vendor, all of his CDs cost $2 each. <laughs> I can't figure out how to fold this up. 
I think that when I got it, I had the same problem. Oh, there we go. Now we got it. Um, but they were all $2 each. I knew this was not the album that had the song that I knew by them, but still decided to pick it up and um, started listening to it. And at first I was kind of a little unenthusiastic uh, about it. Um, it wasn't really grabbing me, but, and I kind of was like, okay, this was a bust, two bucks, whatever. I'll just give it to Goodwill or something. Um, but then as the album went on, it started getting a little bit better like as it uh you know went a little further into the album i started kind of digging it um it's funny because a lot of this sounds like it could have been a rancid album to me you know and there's a lot of guest stars on here and a couple of the guys from rancid i know are in this but um I'm not, i really don't know why tim armstrong had the need to make this uh, like side project because you know maybe with a little tweak here or there most of these songs sound like they could have ended up on a rancid album so it was kind of kind of odd I don't really know uh, the the story there the history or why he wanted to do this project uh, separate from rancid um, but like I said it, it started growing on me and I ended up kind of thinking it was not a bad uh, album uh, some of the tracks on here I like were sad but true Way on My Mind, California Babylon, We Trusted You, and Down in Oakland is another one. But yeah, like I said, I, I don't know that I'm going to run out and pick up. I don't know. There, I know there's at least one other album by The Transplants. I don't know if they have any more than that. But I don't think I'm going to run out and pick it up or anything like that. But this ended up being one that I uh, decided I'd hold on to uh, as opposed to get rid of. Rob Aston is the name of the other dude <laughs> 1984 we get the style council and their album cafe bleu i mean blue <laughs> um first record i ever picked up by the style council style council is uh speaking of side projects this is a side project of paul weller we all know from the jam um i knew of i remember the style council i remember you know hearing about them but i don't know that i knew any of their music uh when they hit the scene so to say um and not much in the booklet there but uh why i picked this one up when i saw it there was i just watched uh live aid recently and the style council appears on live aid on the dvd i was watching i think they did two songs i i really like those songs um i don't think they were on this album but it made me kind of think, yeah, maybe I'll, I should check out check the Style out. Council. I have a couple of things about the jam, and I really like the jam. Um, so when I saw this there at the vendor's table, I decided to give it a shot. And I'm not too crazy about this. Um, I still think I would give them another shot on on. Uh, another one of their albums that has those songs that I heard them play at Live Aid. Um, but this one, just nothing really grabbed me at all. Um, unlike Tim Armstrong with the Transplants, I at least give, you know, some credit to Paul Weller because this is nothing like the jam at all. This kind of reminds me of like Wham! It, it's got like a heavy like dance vibe to it and stuff. Um, but I mean, if I had to pick a band that this sort of reminded me of, I think it's Wham! Um, so it, none of it really caught my ear. Strength of Your Nature, I kind of liked. A Gospel was all right. Dropping Bombs on the White House, if I'm remembering correctly, has like a rap. And it's one of those like mid-80s or whatever raps where you're just like, where, where at the time maybe it wouldn't seem it as much. But like now you hear it and you're like, oh, don't do it. Don't do it, man. <laughs> So yeah, a little disappointing on this one. And from 1977, speaking of Paul Weller and the Jam, the Jam in the city. Um, I think this is their debut. I'm pretty sure. I like I said, I like the Jam quite a bit. I kind of really got into them a handful of years ago. There's a really good documentary that came out. I think it's called um, About the Young Idea, um, which is from a lyric from In the City, the song. Um, but I really liked that documentary. I remember watching it and just all the songs were coming up and I was like, Oh, I remember, I remember this song. I heard this song. 
So I went out and I picked up a uh, best of jam called Snap. I have it on vinyl and I have it on CD, um, but really good. And I always kind of thought that was all that I needed by the jam. And then maybe uh, earlier this year or last summer, I found uh, one of their CDs in like a dollar bin, I think Setting Suns maybe, and I picked it up and, uh, and I really liked it. Um, saw this one there at that vendor and again, it's two bucks. I don't really see the jam CDs out used that cheap all that time. Like that one I got for a dollar, like that was, you know, insane. Uh, and this one for $2 also, but usually when I find their stuff in stores or whatever, it's, it's a bit more than that. And also I think I had that best of, which is really good. And I just, don't know that I felt like I needed anything more. I needed to start picking up their albums, but you know, when they were this cheap, I just decided to, and I think this one out of all of them is one that I thought if I ever found this, I would maybe pick it up. Um, and there it was at the uh, record show. Um, and it's really good. I mean, jam, if you're not familiar with them, kind of a punk band, but very like heavily, like a mod influenced band, obviously heavily inf influenced by the who, uh, you know, you can hear it all over this album. I mean, listening to this album, you know, I, there, you know, you almost feel like you're listening to like a lost early Who album, you know? I mean, so much of this sounds like the Who. You can feel or hear the influence so much on all these songs. And as weird as it is, they even cover the theme, the TV show uh, Batman theme, which the Who did as well. And I honestly, I kind of like the Jams version a bit better than the Who. But uh, yeah, it's a really good record. I've been listening to this a lot. Some of the tunes on here that I really dig are Art School, I've Changed My Address, Slow Down, In the City, Sounds from the Street, Nonstop Dancing, Bricks and Mortar. I mean, the, the whole album I'm really happy with. Although, even though I like their Batman, their version of the Batman theme better than the Who's version, it's, you know, it's definitely like a skip track. I don't need to hear the Batman theme every time I listen to this record. I, I don't even really get the the attraction for these bands covering the Batman theme. I, I mean, I guess maybe it's kind of fun to play, you know, that riff, but it's obviously very repetitive. You're just repeating it over and over again. You know, so I mean, it gets old really quick, even though it's pretty short. So but I don't know what the draw is, why these uh, bands all seem to want to cover the Batman theme. But uh, yeah, really good pickup. Really happy with this one. Again, I don't know that I'm going to start going out and uh, buying up all the other jam, uh, you know, records. But, you know, if I find them that cheap, I, you know, who knows? I'll leave a link below if you want to check out Record Riots to see where they're at. I feel like they're only here in like the East Coast area. Um, but I'm not sure, but you know, you certainly can follow along on, uh, you know, their schedule and see if maybe they're coming to your neck of the woods. Um, but thank you for tuning in. Let me know your experiences with record shows by all means in the comments. Let me know how you make out at these record shows. Cause I know a lot of you guys go to them and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you another time.